what we're showing right now is an overview screen. We also have navigation, communication, media and car apps. And what you're seeing at the moment are contextually relevant suggestions. Um, in this case, we have a navigation card. So eight minutes to home, um, Sally, so a recent phone call that I received. And these are all just presented to me when I connect the phone. So this is Google Play Music. Um, if I hit play, you'll see the media coming through the car speaker system uh, and all the controls that I would expect to, to see from Google Play Music. Uh, here I have an overflow screen. Um, so things like thumbs up, thumbs down, start radio, um, things that I would typically be able to do in Google Play Music on any of my devices. One of the things we're really excited by is all the third party apps that we've got. So everything you see on this menu here are actually apps that are installed on my phone right now. So as I scroll through, I could pick from any of these. And what you'll see is that these applications actually have customized UIs. Um, so if I look at, say, Joyride, I'll see a very different menu to what we just saw in Google Play Music, but it's really easy for the developer to do this. So they get control of things like the color, the iconography, the menu structure, um, to provide an experience that's really like their app, but when in the car. And if we look at um, phone, you can see here people that I've recently called or received calls from. Uh, I can place calls to them really easily, so I can tap this person to place a phone call. So obviously you're in a car, you want to go somewhere. Um, in this car, there's a button on the steering wheel to activate the microphone. So if I tap this, navigate to Alamo Square. So without having to think about where I'm going very much, I can simply tell the car where I want to go. Now what you can see over on the left uh, is a card showing you the next turn you're going to make. So not only can we say that you should turn right in point two of a mile, but we can actually tell you, you can use any of the three rightmost lanes. So we launched lane guidance recently in Google Maps navigation, uh, and we've brought that to Android Auto. We take a look at the rest of Google Maps. What we've done is taken aspects of the product that make it really easy to use and brought them to the car. So for example, under suggestions, I can see things like home or work, which I can just get to really easily. Um, businesses I might have searched for and interacted with recently in Maps. Um, I can also pull up categories. Uh, for example, um, places I might want to park or get gas, which is really easy to do while you're in the car. And then finally, we can turn road traffic on or off for the entire system. And then if you're parked and it's safe to do so, you can pull a keyboard up and um, start typing just as you would on a mobile phone. So I could start typing SFO to head to the airport and you'll see a suggestion can appear and then you can navigate there. And of course, I can say anything that I would to Google, so I can press the, the button Find Starbucks. Here are the listings for Starbucks within 0.7 miles. And then I can see those in Google Maps and navigate there really easily. So if I receive a text message while I'm driving, uh, I'll get one of those heads up notifications at the top. The message gets read out and I can tap the microphone button and then say reply. It's up to the car manufacturers how they want to uh, hook up the controls on the steering wheel into the car system. So in this particular car, the, the microphone button is hooked up, which uses the car's microphone. Um, but you could have other cars with different controls that control different aspects of the product. And from a developer's point of view, that's really a great thing because when I build a music app, I don't have to think, does it have a touchscreen, does it have a rotary dial, does it have a D-pad? I can simply build the app once and not have to worry too much about the controls. Yeah.